Today I would like to introduce you to the great Latin American poet from Chile, Pablo Neruda. He received the Nobel Prize in 1971 and Garcia Marquez, the author of 100 Years of Solitude and Love in the Time of Cholera, called him the greatest poet of the 20th century, not only in Latin America, but in the entire world. So I would like to talk about some of the essential works that Pablo Neruda has published and have made him the most brilliant poet of the 20th century, as I said before, not only in Latin America, but in the world. There are three works that come to my mind. The first one is Residencia en la Terra, Residence on Earth, which establishes him as a forward-looking 20th century poet. And then there is a poet and poem that is called Walking Around, and that poem was written in English and not in Spanish as a title. However, the poem itself was then conceived also in Spanish. His greatest achievement and perhaps his best known poem is Alturas de Machu Picchu, The Heights of Machu Picchu. Not only has it become famous because Machu Picchu is one of the great tourist attractions in the world, but also because Neruda uses Machu Picchu to present his world view. Neruda visited Machu Picchu more than once and used that to show how his own life is indeed attached to this huge Inca monument. He describes it and at the same time he is the poet who is not particularly safe in this world. He thinks that the daily routine, the daily life hurts his eyes. And therefore in Machu Picchu, Alturas de Machu Picchu, he describes all the various elements that is to say, he describes the leaves, he describes the flowers, he des uh, the landscape, and any other object that he can think of. But the characteristic of these objects is that they don't have, indeed, any kind of fixed contour. And this goes back to Neruda's worldview. He cannot find in this world, in the daily world of today, a particular anchor. And therefore, he uses these objects and these situations to show that he hopes to find within these objects that have no contours, perhaps an anchor for his own life. And therefore, in the development of his own intellectual an existential existence, he then looks for two things that he hopes will give him some kind of assurance. And therefore, the two words and the two concepts that are continuously repeated in his poetry is the stone and silence. Is it possible by emerging himself into the waves of the ocean or into the inside of flowers? Will he find something that could offer him a solution? However, the stone is something that he thinks could offer this to him, and it reminds me of Yves Bonfort, who also wrote a poem and a series of poems called Written in Stone. Therefore, he is looking continuously for a solution, but I am of the opinion that in his own poetry, he never really finds the solution as an idea or as a concept. However, when we look back at his entire poetry, we all of a sudden realize that the success and perhaps the solution of his poetry is in the tremendous sound space that he creates. When Deruda reads his own poetry, and I have been there more than once, all of a sudden you have the feeling, 
maybe you don't even need the translation because the energy, the sound and the involvement of his entire body thinks that you do understand the poem. Nevertheless, we have to go back and realize that Alturas de Machu Picchu has been translated more than once and the one translation that I would like to draw our attention to is John Felstina. And he has written a book about Machu Picchu, translating Machu Picchu by Pablo Neruda, which at the beginning of the book he explains all the details, all the background, all the connections that Neruda had, where he was, at what time in his life, when he composed a particular poem, and the heights of uh, Machu Picchu, they were conceived and written in the mid-career of his own life. In the John Felstina book has first, at the very beginning, the various chapters on understanding where the poem comes from, what the poem wants to do, and particularly important for John Felstina was to reconstruct the translation process. He tells us in very great detail the kind of problems he encountered, the problems he solved, and maybe even the problems he couldn't solve. So this is probably, right now, the best book to consult and also the translations to consult of Alturas de Machu Picchu. Coming back then, the solution that Pablo Neruda found is perhaps in trusting that the sound of the word, the sound of the sentence, and the power of the word can ultimately overshadow the chagrin and the angst that he had throughout his life. He was continuously seeking, looking for something that could satisfy his own existence in this world. And from my point of view, there is no other poet that I know who has that capacity to recreate the poem and the meaning of the poem through the reading of the sound space that is inherent in each word that he has created. Mm -hmm.